days. Uh, I'm your cruise director, Brian Bellendorf, uh, executive director of the Hyperledger project at the Linux Foundation. Uh, as people are making their way in, we've got plenty of room closer up front. Uh, uh, it's a kind of a small, narrow room, kind of one of those railroad apartment style. So feel free to come up close and, uh, uh, and listen. Uh, today we're going to have a, a series of panels uh, uh, where we're going to hear about the role of uh, open source software in uh, the blockchain industry and really what Hyperledger is trying to do in this space. Uh, we're going to hear about uh, deployments in the wild, you know, proofs of concept, pilots, you know, actual meaty, like what's going on out here in, in, uh, in the world of, of uh, Hyperledger. Uh, and then after that, we'll have a panel about the state of security uh, uh, as it relates to consortium chains, as it relates to, to Hyperledger, that sort of thing. So um, to try to get things kicked off, uh, I know a lot of you know about who we are and, and what we're up to. So I want to give you kind of an update uh, and, and admit, uh, actually, that uh, this is pretty much the one point something-ish anniversary of me joining uh, uh, the, the, the Hyperledger project. It was at uh, Consensus last year that I was on the cusp. I'd been talking with the Linux Foundation about joining the project that had just launched uh, officially a few months prior. Uh, I was somewhat enjoying my, my job as a cushy job as a venture capitalist and kind of going, oh, do I really want to jump into this? And it was when I saw the energy at Consensus last year uh, and, and really the really technically interesting and meaty debates about uh, architecture and uh, 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 consortia versus public chains and, and all that, that I said, yeah, this, this is definitely interesting. And I think it's when I saw Larry Summers on stage saying, yeah, this is probably how we will reinvent the systems of the world, that I was like, all right, I'll throw in. Um, so in the course of that year, Hyperledger has, has done some really fun stuff. Um, Hyperledger started uh, uh, very much as two interesting projects, two different takes on how one might build consortia chains, uh, one of those being the Fabric project, uh, originally coming from IBM, but since that time having involved now uh, participants from a over a dozen different companies, uh, hundreds of developers uh, working together to get what uh, is hopefully over the next couple of weeks, uh, a short number of months, uh, a, a 1.0 release. Uh, and uh, the different take there is pluggable consensus, is this idea of many different kinds of nodes that play different roles in forming that consensus in a smart contract layer uh, based on Go, uh, and, and, and a lot of other interesting ideas. And then Sawtooth was the other project. And Sawtooth continues to thrive. Uh, originally came from Intel, but now has had contributions from several other companies. Uh, uh, it, uh, as you probably know, has a take on, uh, per, uh, a different take on uh, consensus called proof of elapsed time, but also involves uh, ideas around something called transaction families and using more of the kind of ex secure enclave extensions in the Intel chips. Uh, but, but but from those, those humble beginnings, you know, with a couple of dozen developers, a couple of dozen companies, we've grown substantially. We now have uh, hundreds of de developers working across eight different projects. Uh, we recently announced, for example, uh, uh, three projects I'm uh, very excited about. Um, one of those is uh, the uh, Indie project. This is, comes to us from a collaboration with uh, the Sovereign Foundation, uh, as well as a number of companies that are working to reinvent how identity on, on blockchains can work to try to get us out of the naive implementation of identity on blockchain, which would be just a big database with a, 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 you know, everyone's ID as fields in that database, and towards a notion of having the individual involved at the center of uh, deciding who uh, they share information with, how that gets shared, using some uh, standards that are being developed at the W3C and elsewhere, including the, the recently uh, announced uh, Digital ID Foundation, uh, Digital Identity Foundation, um, uh, around verifiable, verifiable claims and that sort of thing. So Hyperledger Indie is really exciting. Um, we also launched Hyperledger Composer. Uh, Composer is this really interesting kind of graphical tool to be able to define the role of uh, uh, that your different types of organizations in a blockchain might play, uh, the business processes that that those those uh, or those different actors kind of uh, uh, operate upon, and then it spits out chain code and and uh, and a way to, to structure that currently in Fabric, although getting support for other projects at Hyperledger such as Sawtooth and Aroha and others is being talked about now. Uh, and and finally, the contribution from Monax uh, called Hyperledger Burrow, uh, which is a uh, Monax's uh, original code base called uh, used to be called RSDB. Uh, this is an implementation of the Ethereum virtual machine, uh, uh, and it uses the Tendermint consensus as its consensus layer, as its DLT layer. Uh, 
Um, this is exciting because I think, I, I hope this finally helps put to rest some of the uh, Hyperledger versus Ethereum kind of nonsense. It's an and, not an or. Uh, I, I, hyper, uh, Ethereum as a technology stack, as a set of standards, as a smart contract engine is really interesting. And I think it can be interesting in consortia settings as well as public chain settings. And so Burrow is an Apache licensed EVM uh, and we're interested in tracking where the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance takes that, uh, takes those standards in that space and seeing and bringing Burrow along for that ride. So these three projects also joined some news we announced this week uh, around the graduation of Iroha and Sawtooth from incubator status to active status. What is that? Yep. What does that mean? That that and we'll talk a bit about on the panel about that coming up. Uh, but the, uh, the basically, you know, we follow a model very much like Apache and some other open source projects have, where what we care about most are the communities around these code bases, making sure that they are uh, vibrant, that they are multi-stakeholder projects. Uh, so. Uh, different companies get involved, and it's really the, the back and forth between many different interests that build something that's, that's, that's robust and interesting. Uh, and it makes sure that those projects are following the community conventions for how you build the code, how you set up a security process, how you do all the things that help not only the public trust it, but enterprises trust it as well. So um, the, we now have these three active projects. The other five are still in incubation, but you know we're going to help them get to that point soon. Um, and, and so on the developer community side, we're, we're developing side and the develop, developer community side, we're really happy with where things are going. Um, uh, as you probably also know, the Hyperledger project is supported by our members, right? That's what allows uh, the staff, many of you whom you've hopefully met at our, ba uh, at our booth uh, on the sixth floor, sixth floor, I guess, downstairs, um, I, I, I get up every morning and think about how to build Hyperledger as a terrific project. Uh, we do all the things as a staff that um, software developers prefer not to do when it comes to building an open source community. Everything from making sure that the legal T's and C's are, are handled to uh, uh, the uh, branding and marketing around these projects are, are accurate and appropriate uh, to make sure that no company runs away with the brand and, and tries to claim it as their own, right? Uh, but also to broaden in, uh, the opportunities that get created by having a terrific set of technologies out there. Uh, and then also the boring things like running continuous integration servers uh, and uh, uh, trying to thorn, uh, sort out some of the thorny issues around uh, uh, the, the technical issues that might arise between uh, projects. And sometimes you just need somebody to explain um, what these projects do to companies that are thinking about getting involved. And so uh, uh, some of you might have had a chance to meet uh, some of my new staff earlier uh, at, at some of the various Meet the Hyperledger community uh, uh, staff kind of sessions. Um, but in order to bring that staff together, we're supported by our members, right? And since launch, uh, where we had about 35 different organizations supporting us, we've now grown to over 140 different companies and institutions. Uh, uh, we recently, we just announced eight new members uh, this week. Uh, one of those is Change Healthcare. Who here has heard of Change? Uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's one of those companies like DTCC that kind of many people might not have heard of, but is actually a significant part of the back end of a major industry. Change is also sometimes known or, or is partnered with uh, McKesson, uh, which is a little better known. But this is a company that runs a major part of the payments and claims processing uh, in, in the healthcare space, all right? Uh, and so they've been looking at blockchain, as many of our other members have in the healthcare setting, as a way to dramatically fix uh, 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 what is right now a very broken and paperwork heavy system. Uh, uh, and, and so we're, we're, we're doing a bunch of different things in the healthcare space, and they're going to be really good partners for that. Um, we've announced seven other members. They include um, uh, Deloitte and Ernst & Young, um, uh, uh, which are, are really good partners. I mean, they, they are classic kind of technology neutral kinds of organizations, but they've been now doing so many projects with Hyperledger-related technologies that they felt they needed to be a part of supporting the organization, um, uh, as well as a, a bank in China called Citic, uh, which is one of the larger uh, banks that are out there. But really, it's the startups that I'd say I'm, I'm most proud of, of, of having joined. Right now, it, uh, about 45% of our members are startups, uh, and uh, uh, the opportunities to build businesses in this space, I think, are just, just really tremendous. So we're happy for that. And, and we continue to see about a third uh, of our members, a quarter to a third, maybe 30% of our members, being based in China, um, some of them, uh, many of them headquartered in mainland China. Um, and, uh, and so building this movement as a true global movement 
is really important to us. Uh, and so uh, a lot of exciting stuff happening in this ecosystem. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit from uh, uh, some of these different panels coming up now. Uh, I kind of wanted to make you know, just a few minutes of a kind of you know, Q&A, open Q&A, about uh, Hyperledger as a project and where we're heading now. If anyone is up for asking a question on this front, uh, I would be happy to take, take your questions or jump straight into the panels.